homework time, yes! Homework time. All right, let's start off jotting our name down at the top of the paper so don't forget to do that later. You want to turn in your work with your name on it. I'll write my name, you write yours. Let's both write today's date. I'll write today, and you write the actual date. So our instructions are to use the following three fractions to write two subtraction and two addition number sentences. This is like fact families. You're, I, I have a feeling you're going to find this kind of easy. Ignore for a second that these are fractions. And we just had the numbers, 5, 4, and 9. Well, we know that 5 plus 4, I'm sure you see right off, is 9, right? And so it holds true, watch the magic, math and magic in action, that 5, 6 and 4, 6 is 9, 6. Ta-da! All right, and so, of course, because addition is commutative, we can reverse the add-ins so that we can also say that 4, 6 and 5, 6 makes 9, 6. And now to do the subtraction, obviously, you know it. We're going to start off with that 9 and subtract, say, 5 to get 4. And again, if you look at it, like, you're saying, yeah, I learned that in, like, second grade or whatever. Okay, so 9, 6 then. Minus 5, 6 is 4, 6. Same idea. And, of course, then we can uh, change the diminuend and the difference Shut up your hand. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's right. And uh, so we can say that 9, 6 minus 4, 6 will give us 5, 6. See? No problem. We'll do the same thing here. So 5, 13, and 8. Yeah, you got it. That 5 and 8 are 13. And you see now I'm being smart and dropping the uh, addition and equal signs there because I know I'm going to be adding on a denominator here or writing in. So 5 ninths and 8 ninths is 13 ninths. And these being improper fractions doesn't really affect anything we're doing here today. And of course I can reverse the add-ins because uh, addition is commutative. They can commute the way I do from home to work and work to home every day. I commute. I go from one place to the other. That's how you remember commutative. You commute to work and home to home to work to work to home to home to work going back and forth, back and forth, you can commute these add-ins and get the same uh, sum. All right, and so then when I start off with the subtraction, I'll begin with the larger number here and say, well, 13 minus, say, 5 is 8. Now let's go ahead and write the other one right off here. And before we talk about fractions and denominators, that, hey, 13 minus 8 is Five and you know talking about ninths doesn't really change anything here. Thirteen ninths minus five ninths is eight ninths. Thirteen ninths minus eight ninths is five ninths. How's that? Pretty good. Moving on. And so in number two, you see we have six examples here. Let me check quickly. We're doing subtraction on all of them. You see on three of them we're subtracting from one whole, and in three of them we're subtracting from one in a fraction, a mixed number. Okay, so we have an idea of what we're doing. And I went ahead, and if you want to pause the video and do the same, and just drew out number lines, because our instructions are to solve, model each subtraction problem with a number line, and solve by both counting up and subtracting. So, let's look at this one. So we're starting off with 1 minus 5 eighths. So I'm at the top here, I'm going to write 1. And now I need to subtract 5 eighths. So uh, I can safely make this 0. And right smack dab in the middle, I know I'm going to have a half, yes, but in terms of eighths, 1 half equals how many eighths? You're getting the hang of this, right? It's 4 eighths. You got it. And so in between is going to be, well, 2 eighths here and 6 eighths here. And then in between each of those, I can pay, place a little tick mark for each of the uh, odd numbered numerators. So 1 8, 3 8, 5 8, and 7 8. Okay, 
So I can both count up and subtract. So from 5 eighths, uh, counting up to one whole is 1, 2, 3 eighths. Okay, so I can, because uh, my instructions are to solve, I can place an answer here. I can say, hey, that's 3 eighths. And then going uh, down uh, from 1, I can say, hey, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 eighths, and I land here at 3 eighths. See, so I can do it both ways. And this is a great thing to do, not only with fractions and such, but anytime you have subtraction, see what works best to count up or to subtract. Let's do the next one. So again, we're going to have uh, one whole, because that's what we're subtracting from, so we won't have any values greater than one. And putting zero here is a safe way to go. Now here we're dealing with fifths. So we, need, we know we need, just like we do with the rectangle, we need to place four evenly spaced lines within here, uh, which is trickier than doing eighths. So one, two, three, and four. Not so shabby, huh? So this would be one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths. Whoa, what is that mess? Four fifths, and of course, one whole, which would be five fifths. So I can uh, count up from two fifths. I can go one, two, three fifths, and that's my solution. Other way of doing it is to say, okay, well, so from one, I can subtract two fifths, exactly as it's written, saying, okay, one, two fifths lands me here at three fifths. Okay, same thing. So you should get the same thing both times. Now, with one and three sixths, I'm going to go ahead and and I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and place that at the top of my line. Uh, you you know I do like to have a little breathing space, but in this case I'm going to do that there. Okay, and so now I have to I have to kind of think about how am I going to parse out this line. All right, so let me, let me just for, I think it's going to be easiest to kind of work backwards here and. We'll get far enough, don't worry. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. So one and three six, this would be one and two six, one and one six. And this would be one and zero six, but we can just call it one whole, right? Safely. And what would be a sixth less than six six? Well, of course, five six. There we go. And then four, six, three, six, and two, six. If your number line's a little different, as long as it works for what we're doing, it works. So from one and three, six, let's start by subtracting. We've done it both ways. We can start with either one. Uh, let's start by subtracting five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six would give us an answer of four, six. And now if we were to add up from 5, 6, going to 1 and 3, 6, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. So we got the same answer. Good. Whew, that was a close one. This one's even easier. Look, we're going to start with 1 here and 0 here because we're subtracting from 1. And we're dealing with fourths. So we know that the halfway point is what? two-fourths, right? That's equal to one-half. And then it's easy to place one-fourth and three-fourths. And of course, we know one whole is equal to four-fourths. So we can start by subtracting perhaps this time, saying, hey, subtracting one-fourth gives me an answer of three-fourths. There we go. And to add up from one-fourth, we'd say it's one, two, three-fourths. And we got the same answer both times. Lovely, delicious, isn't it? Um, and now, because of uh, space limitations here, I'm going to have to label my number line on the top and kind of write smallishly. So one and one third, I'm going to do this the same as I did C, place the larger number at the top and then just work my way backwards here. All right, so uh, one and one third, this would be one and zero thirds, which we could call three thirds or just plain one whole. And then what would be a third less than that? Yep, 
two thirds. And then, ooh, I'm gonna kind of make use of the space here. It's not gonna be perfect, but hey, what is in this life, yo? And then zero. Okay, so from one and one thirds, let's start by subtracting two thirds. So one, two thirds, it gives us the answer of two thirds. That's really the answer. And then from two thirds to count up, we'd say one, two thirds. There we go. Uh, so we get the same answer both ways. And so now, uh, last one here for number two. Uh, let's do it the same way as we did C and E there. Put one and one fifth at the top of the line, and then start labeling backwards by fifths. I just this is just a convention I use. This is neither the right nor wrong or whatever way to do it. It's just a way that works for me to label this line correctly. Um, so this would be one and zero fifths, one whole, five fifths, and as I've done with the others, I'm just going to call that one. Now, if that's five fifths, what's a fifth less? Four fifths. And now we can just continue counting down. Three fifths. Oh, looks like I'll, this will work out nicely. Two fifths, one fifth, and zero, and I'm gonna do my bouncy lines on the bottom here, just again for space reasons. No, oh, no, actually I can fit them on top. All right, so from one one fifth, I'm gonna subtract first. I'm gonna go down two fifths, so one two fifths. That gives me an answer of four fifths. And now if I start from two fifths and add up or count up to one and one fifth, I'd go one two three four fifths and I got the same answer. Isn't it delightful? Delicious, delectable. Moving on. And hey, in number three, we just do the same thing with number bonds instead of a number line. No problem, Bob. So we're gonna find the difference in two ways. We'll use number ban uh, bonds to decompose the total. Part A has been completed for you, so we'll look at this example. We have one and two fifths, minus four fifths. So what we do is we say, okay, so this one and two fifths I can think of as five fifths, that's the one whole, and then the two fifths, okay. So five fifths and two fifths, well, I can rename this as seven fifths. So what this is saying here is it's saying, hey, I'm gonna think of one and two fifths, and I'm only gonna explain this on this first one, okay? So chill out, don't leave me comments saying you talk too much. I'm explaining it, dude, it's my job, all right? Um, so one and two fifths is equal to seven fifths. That's what this is all about, okay? Because now, instead of saying one and two fifths minus four fifths, which is kind of wonky to think about, now we can rewrite this as what we have right here. Hey, instead of saying one and two fifths, we can say seven fifths minus four fifths is three fifths. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Okay, so now another way of doing it is to take that one and two fifths. And this way, I'll be honest with you, I don't like this way. I, I think what we just did is much clearer. If this helps you, then wonderful. But uh, all y'all at Eufrica, you can probably ditch this. I don't think this is too useful. What this is doing is it's saying, hey, I'm going to take that one whole as five-fifths and subtract the four-fifths to get one-fifth. Oh, but don't forget... I had the two-fifths as well, and that's what they're doing here. They're saying, okay, I subtracted and got one-fifth, so then I'll add that two-fifths back in, and this is why I don't like this, because it's easy to forget to do this. Add that two-fifths back in and get three-fifths. This is kind of like scrambled egg method, so this, this is, it works, but it's not my favorite. All right, so let's go through this one ourselves. So with the one whole, we're talking about eighths now, not fifths, we're talking about eighths, so one whole is eight eighths. And then we have this three eighths, lovely. So if we were to take the one eighth, and I'm gonna combine these steps here, there's no need to write the whole thing again, eight eighths and three eighths, well, that's together, it's 11 eighths. So all I did now is rename one and three eighths as 11 eighths. Now, and I'm just gonna continue in a line here, I'm not gonna break it out of separate equations as they do. Now I can subtract that seven eighths, no problem, right? 11 minus 7 is 4, and we're talking about what? We're talking about eighths, Ed. And look, 
done. All right, uh, here's the, uh, the wonky method, which is to say that one whole, we already know, we decomposed it, is 8 eighths. And so if I can subtract then the 7 eighths from that, that would leave me with 1 eighth. And then say, take that 1 eighth, and don't forget we had this 3 eighths before, so we have to pop that back on there, add it back in, and that will give me the same 4 eighths I got that way, okay? There you go, you know. Take it or leave it, folks. Um, with the 1 and 1 fourth, I have to squeeze it in here. Uh, we're talking about what? We're talking about fourths, Ed. So that one hole is four fourths. And then, of course, oh, man, sometimes I have problems with fours. And then I have that one fourth. I just have to lift the pen. It's different from real writing. So four fourths and one fourth together make five fourths, from which it is simple to subtract the three fourths now. So all I did in this step was I renamed one and one fourth, or decomposed, uh, one and one fourth as five fourths. And now I can subtract three fourths, no problem. And it's two fourths, of course. And now here's the Wonkerific method. If I take that one whole as four fourths, I can subtract the three fourths from it, which leaves me with one fourth. But remember, I'm not done because I have this other one fourth here. So I take the one fourth I got there and add back in that one fourth I had kind of separated out for a moment. And then I would get the same two fourths answer I got here. Well, look at that. Um, we just have like three more of these to do and then we're done. Good homework night, huh? Admit it. Well, at a glance, you can tell that D and here, D and E, D and E, O, D, are just more of the same. So uh, let's go ahead and decompose these bad boys. One whole, what are we talking about? We're talking about sevenths, Ed. So these, uh, it says one whole is seven sevenths. And then we have two sevenths, right? Okay. Um, and so if we put these together, how many sevenths are we talking about? We're talking about nine sevenths. Now, can we easily subtract the five sevenths? Yes, indeed we can. No trouble there. Because nine minus five is four. So we're talking about four sevenths. I like that way. Let's do it the Wonkerific method here. We're talking about sevenths, so we're going to take just that one whole as seven sevenths and subtract the five sevenths. And what do we get? Okay, two sevenths, right? But don't forget, we had those two sevenths back there, so if we take the two sevenths we got and add back in the two sevenths we had kind of left aside for a moment, we get that same four sevenths that we got by doing it this way. All right, so now here we're talking about what, Ed? We're talking about tenths. So that one whole is ten tenths, and then we have the three tenths. Together they are, that's right, thirteen tenths, from which we can easily subtract the seven tenths we're subtracting. Thirteen minus seven, the happy, happiest little fact family there is, is six. So, and we're talking about tenths. And to do it the other way, finish it out here. If we take that one whole as ten tenths, subtract, what are we subtracting? Seven tenths. What do we get? We get three tenths, yep. But wait, there's more. Because we take that three tenths we just got here, and we cannot forget about the three tenths we had before that we had kind of set aside. We're going to bring it back in, add that to it, and we get six tenths, the same six tenths we got by doing it the other way. All right, you did it. All right, go have some fun now, all right? Or do the rest of your homework. Ha! Huh? Okay, so I'll see you again next time. It's once again homework time.